system presents Telephone Time. Telephone Time with the stories of John Nesbitt. By the winter of 1912, Maggie Brown of Denver spoke five languages well. She attended the opera as a student of music and raised her lorgnette with the best of society. It was inevitable then that Maggie Brown, now Mrs. Brown of Denver, on first name terms with the international set, would be invited by the Astors to the leading social event of the winter season, the wonderful maiden voyage of the world's proudest ship, the SS Titanic. Oh, Maggie, I'm so glad you could make the trip back to the States with us. It would have been impossibly dull without you, Maggie. <laughs> Maggie, we need a third for Pinochle. Mr. Trump! <laughs> <laughs> Maggie! Maggie, we haven't seen you since Biarritz. We've missed you all. Now that Mr. Strauss has his Maggie, maybe he will stop his everlasting grumbling. No, only one thing will make him do that, his pinochle. going. Over record crossing, I assure you. Good. Ah, oh, good evening, Father. Did I understand you to say we're making a record crossing? The Titanic is certain to pick up the Blue Ribbon. <sighs> Iceberg, get ahead! I'll see if I can find out what's happened. Come out this way. Uh, come, dear. dear.
girdles are tight and secure. Women and children only. Women and children only. Rebecca. Let me go. Let me go. Rebecca, go back. I have been at my husband's side for 30 years. I do not think I believe him now. loving, kind, and pleasant row. Let her satisfy thee at all times, and be thou ravished always with her love. In one lifeboat, on the freezing mirror-like seas, crouched the exhausted Maggie Brown, who in this one night of terror and disaster would exert the stubborn determination that had never deserted her, and incredibly, in this one role that she had never imagined, she would find the goal she had always desired. The social climber Maggie Brown would become the social lion of Denver and the West, the unsinkable Mrs. Brown. The footnote to Maggie Brown's story lies in a stack of letters, which undoubtedly meant a great deal more to her than her later day triumphs as a social leader. I would like to explain them to you. Mrs. Brown lived until 1932, and then she came to realize, like many another social leader, that she had won hundreds of acquaintances and few friends. Yet, each and every year, always dated April the 14th, she received a very loving round-robin letter, which was signed by every man and woman and child who had been with her in the lifeboat on that night when the Titanic sank below the sea. What 
Maggie Tobin came west searching for was to be a lady of leisure. And what she won fame for was being a woman of action. Join us for Telephone Time next week. Until then, we remain sincerely yours, the Bell Telephone System. Thank you.